No stands for no long things. Wow. You know, I mean, for us at the very beginning, we wanted a business that um, our services were very quick, mm -hmm. were very speedy. Basically, everything we do, we do with a sense of urgency. Yes. We don't keep our customers waiting. Mm -hmm. And like you rightly said, uh, there are two arms to our business, the investment side mm -hmm. and the uh, loan side, as speculated by the CBN regulation. Okay, so um, our lending for SMEs businesses is from 100k to the maximum of 20 million naira. Okay. On the personal side, that's yes. when you do jobs, yeah. it's 100k to 5 million naira. Okay. Uh, typically, we ask people that want to apply for the 100k range to go by the app. Okay. You know, whilst um, the others that are doing bigger ticket sizes, you apply by our website. Right. Um, www.nofinance.com and then somebody picks it up, reaches out to you, contacts you and then you submit all the requested information. Um, I think congratulations are in order for your uh, CBN license. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Uh, so um, let's, let's start with no finance, can you give us a sense of the core of no finance? I understand that is the investment harm, that is the loan harm. I always start with the story of the meaning of notes. Right. You know, uh, because it's not a word that you find in the English dictionary. Mm -hmm. Note stands for no long things. Wow. You know, I mean, for us at the very beginning, we wanted a business that um, our services were very quick, mm -hmm. were very speedy. Basically, everything we do. We do with a sense of urgency. Yes. We don't keep our customers waiting. Mm -hmm. And like you rightly said, uh, there are two arms to our business, the investment side mm -hmm. and the uh, loan side, as speculated by the CBN regulation. So on the investment side, we can offer investments to both retail <coughs> and uh, corporate customers, starting from 100,000 Naira and above. And we offer pretty attractive rates as well, quite competitive. Um, typically, we can't do anything that exceeds more than 12 months you know, because it's the, the banks and the microfinance banks that can do longer tenure and placements. But for us, we can't do more than 12 months, but we offer pretty attractive uh, rates, which are above uh, inflation. On the lending side, we, we have several lending products, ranging from the salary advance to salary for, for salary earners. We have uh, working capital loans. We have asset financing, where we can either finance people that want to purchase uh, motor vehicles, generators. Even now, we're looking into going to a partnership with a firm that offers um, solar solutions. Mm -hmm. And then um, we've also got invoice financing and the annuitant loan for retired pensioners. Um, and once again, our loans are very, very attractive in terms of pricing, in terms of the turnaround time, and um, the sort of flexibility that we offer for it. Um, we, we've got a lending application that we're working on, which will be available on the major app stores, that is both Apple and the Google Play Store. So we're coming through with a lot of innovation and using a lot of technology to push uh, both, both sides of the business. Is, is the investment harm the core part of the business? Um, they are both important because mm -hmm. without one, the other doesn't exist. So the investments that we receive, we, we use them to um, push the lending. You know, so when people give us money, that's what we use it for in order to be able to generate the returns to pay them their interest and, of course, uh, every other thing that we do. So without one, there can't be the other. Uh, okay. It's it's like a bank. A bank right. needs deposits to facilitate lending. Individuals and corporate organizations invest, correct. then you lend it up. That's correct, yes. What's the lending structure like? How does this really work? Okay, so... Um, our lending for SMEs businesses is from 100k to the maximum of 20 million naira. Okay. Um, on the personal side, that yes. is when you do jobs, yeah. it's 100k to 5 million naira. Okay. Um, typically, we ask people that want to apply for the 100k range to go by the app. Okay. You know, whilst um, the others that are doing bigger ticket sizes, they come by the other channel. It's still, it's still digitally enabled. Okay. You know, I you apply via our website, right? Um, www.nofinance.com, and then somebody picks it up, reaches out to you, contacts you, and then you submit all the requested information. Also, 
uh, by a form on the, on the website. Okay. So we try and make everything to that basically. Okay, so for people looking for below 100, they do everything on behalf? On the app, yes. Okay. Um, I, I think there's also something like a referral system? Yes. So on the app, there's a built-in referral um, system. Okay. Where if, uh, for example, you have an account on the app, yes. there's a referral code you have. If you forward to somebody, you know that it's through you or that okay. um, that person came to okay. get some sort of a, a reward for that, basically. So it's okay. just an incentive to encourage people. Uh, but also offline, you still offer some sort of a referral agency uh, scheme as well for um, agents, basically, as well. Okay. Well, when, when is it they have launching? Um, is it anytime soon? Yeah, so we're looking at September. Okay, okay. End of over September. Okay. Okay. So now with the CBN license, mm -hmm. what does this mean for Node Finance at this point? The CBN license gives us eligibility, you know, the credibility to be able to do business in, in a way that gives everybody confidence. So if I come to you and I tell you, Dimeji, come and come and place um, one million naira with me for twelve months, yeah. naturally you'll be a bit uh, panicky that oh, um, you know, who am I placing money with? Are they regulated? What are they using the money for? Am I going to get my money back? But first and foremost, if I tell you that I'm licensed or regulated by the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is the highest authority for anybody in our, our own part of the financial services, um, that will give you at least that little bit of comfort that you need to know that uh, you are doing business with the right people. And I mean, it's not going to come to that with notes, but you know that if things go wrong, you know where to go, right. which is the Central Bank. And of course, um, for us, even beyond that, we can tap into multiple sources of, um, of funding. So the, business, uh, the CBN, for instance, has um, a lot of schemes that it does in order to make um, finance accessible to different segments of the economy. You know, microfinance banks, finance houses like ourselves are able to access some of these um, sources. So it just opens a lot of doors for us and just gives us the credibility to do the business that we're doing. Are you targeting um, the young people? Who are, the, who are your target market? Well, our target market is, yes, from the young people mm -hmm. up onto what I'll call the middle age. Let me put it that way. We're more focused on SMEs, on the lending side. Mm -hmm. um, we try to be diverse, you know, focus on both uh, women and, um, and men. But from an age perspective, from the uh, market research that we that we've done, mm -hmm. we see that our market is ranging from like the twenties to late forties age range. If you're targeting SMEs, there are there are a lot of um, platforms, other platforms out there mm -hmm. who who do the same thing. What what, what makes Note really different? Uh, well, for us, most importantly, mm -hmm. uh, customer service is what differentiates. I've encountered some of these other financial institutions. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that uh, we're, we're coming to with uh, top-notch customer service. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, we've done a survey of the market, and we've seen that even our price points is actually more affordable than some of the um, other competitors in the market. So those are the two major things we're coming with. We're also coming with speed, but uh, I won't call that the number one um, selling point because a lot of these guys are offering speed. But you know, speed is also very important for us. We aim to turn around your business for you within 24 hours. What inspired Note Finance? What made you come up with? Why is it necessary to start Note Finance? So prior to this, I was in finance, but I was in the investment side of finance. Okay. So along the way, I noticed that people needed, uh, you know, funds basically. Then put it that way. So people used to come and approach me. But what I used to offer was investments, okay. not uh, not lending, you know. So. Myself and one of uh, my current co-founders, he was also a director on uh, my previous company. So we just got talking, we started spotting the opportunity that there's a real opportunity in here that is not being serviced. That was number one. Number two, we noticed that uh, a lot of technologies were coming along uh, that was making it the right time. Because if you look at before, the challenge with a lot of uh, banks and other lending institutions was um, availability of information on their customers. But now there are so many data points, there's so much technology that is available that we also tap into that I think makes the business uh, that much better now and um, more organized. So I think it was a case of timing and spotting the opportunity that you know the time was right. And also importantly, um, the right partners on board. You know, at, at the time we started our planning pre-pandemic, 
Um, there are six of us that are the core promoters of the business, or well, I'll say seven. And it was just sort of fortunate the way we all spotted each other and both recognized the same opportunity at the same time. And these are people of um, great experience and skill that without them, uh, not won't be in existence. You know, it is one thing to conceptualize an idea. It is another thing to bring people together to, to marshal out a plan to make it happen. How did you pull the team together to get to where you are now? Once we, I was able to articulate what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And once they, once they saw that, I guess they bought into that. But ultimately, number two is also um, integrity to an extent. Um, I've been around, you know, for a number of years. Like I said, in the investment space, people see what we've done and um, they know the way I operate, basically. So once I spoke to them, most of them didn't even have any second, second thoughts. You know, they were on board. So there was a lot of um, strategy, planning, meetings that went into this. And in so doing, you begin to sort of understand each other, you share ideas, you do research, and you arrive at a, at a fine point. You say you have a finance background. Tell us your story. Okay, well, I started my career in the UK. Yeah. Uh, I actually graduated um, in both my um, BSc and um, MSc in the UK. And then I proceeded to start working in the UK. I worked there for about eight, in about eight years, uh, but mostly in the technology space, or technology and finance space. Mm -hmm. um, come 2013, I, I just decided it was time to come back to Nigeria. Once again, I felt the time was right. Um, our democracy was progressing and the economy was open, opening up. So I came to Nigeria and I came to join a um, firm called Ankoria Investment and Securities, which is a investment outfit. Okay. So I mean, before then I had specialized in, in investments anyway. Um, so that's why I worked for the last uh, 2013 to 2020. That's about seven years. You know, um, stock booking, asset management, that sort of space. So, it, I mean, it's, it's quite a different space because you invest in um, assets for people, financial assets. But um, you know, along the line, like I said, we spotted this opportunity. I felt the time was right to create something like this. Who, who are some of the professionals that are on your team and what, what is really their skill sets? Okay, so, uh, well, number one is Mr. Robert Ijire. Uh He's the one that I said we were together on the, on the board before. Okay. He's actually a lawyer and a finance expert. Okay. Um, and then we've got Mr. Laulu Alabi. He's an accountant by training and also a finance expert. We've got uh, Mr. Shiwani Baba. He's also a trained accountant as well. So yeah, those are the people on the team. And as you can see, if I was to pay such people to come and maybe put together a business plan, you can right. imagine how much we would have spent. But mm -hmm. these are guys that gave their time and also their money because they also invested in the business mm -hmm. because they believed in this, uh, in this dream. So I was quite fortunate to be able to get um, a broad range of people to come together and fine tune or finesse a business plan and strategy. So uh, with this CBN license, I mean, I believe that you are going all out to storm the market. What should people expect? Oh, they should expect a lot from us. Um, we intend to not be calm about the level of noise we're going to make. Um, in terms of the products that we're going to be bringing out, both on the investment side, on the lending side, um, we intend to be as uh, innovative as possible in how we attack the market. We might not have the necessary funds to be able to place billboards all over Nigeria, but we'll be very tactical. We live in a digital age, yeah. you know, so it's about targeted marketing anyway. Those are the kind of things we're going to concentrate on. So we're going to try and target our precise, um, you know, niche, basically. Um, and with the set of products that we have and with the app that we have as well. So the app, for instance, is intended to target the retail end of the market and those that are technology savvy. So you find a lot of the younger demographic, everything they do, they want to be able to do it via an app. While some of the older guys still prefer either phone calls, emails, or coming into our office. Right. Which is why, once again, we chose this kind of location that is easy to find, is comfortable, and people can easily come in here to also do business. Right. Yeah, so we, through those multiple channels, we feel we can cater to a multiple segment. Fantastic. So, um, you've been in the UK, you've worked in the UK, 
and you came to Nigeria. And it, people say the business environment here, you know, is tough. Mm. What has been the challenges and what is your experience doing business in Nigeria? Yes, you're right. I mean, there are two different environments. Yes. Um, Nigeria is definitely challenging, even from basic things like um, energy, having to power your own office, right. your diesel and generator, to even staffing, mm. uh, you know, getting, um, getting the right type of staff that you need. Um, that's also another challenge. And then sometimes, you know, the regulators as well. So, I mean, all around, then of course, you have the microeconomic situation in the country where you're dealing with um, multiple economic factors such as inflation, soaring cost. So yeah, I mean, um, you deal with so many things in Nigeria that um, you, you don't necessarily face as often in UK or other parts of the world. Um, I think those are some of the major differences or challenges. As an entrepreneur, I mean, failure is part of, um, is inevitable. Yeah. Do you, have you failed at anything before? How were you able to navigate that and come out? While I was in the UK, I had actually attempted several businesses in Nigeria okay. that didn't work out. So there I started to understand that uh, Nigeria is not a place where you can just sit far away, 6,000 miles away, and put your money and not be there. You know, um, it just won't work. So those were some of my early experiences in uh, business and failure, I would say. And then even moving to Nigeria, I, I I had some hard and difficult lessons as well in the business that I was running. But luckily, I, I had a mentor and somebody that was able to also guide me, even though I still made some mistakes. You know, from there, we were able to learn lessons that I will say today are applicable to this business that we're even doing. You know, so... Yeah. Where do you see notes in five years? Um... So interesting enough, um, we had a strategy session in late December last year, and you know we did a one-year, five-year, and ten-year uh, plan. Uh, you know, five years we see ourselves as an African player. We see ourselves as having at least no less than two hundred thousand active customers, both investment and on the loan side. We see ourselves as a reference point for innovation in, within the industry in Nigeria. We see ourselves having at least forty times the current loan book size and at a minimum of 60 times in the investment uh, book size. Um, we see our, uh, our shareholder base, you know, growing at least probably 100 times. And, you know, depending on where tech, um, finance and technology is at that point, we see ourselves possibly having a, a banking license or the other, you know, evolving this license with that, that, that are also in that business skill. Are you looking to raise more funds? So yeah, no, definitely for a business to grow, um, you need more funds. Yes. That's, uh, that goes without saying. So for some of the things that I've mentioned, you definitely need more funds because for you to get to that level, you need to market more. Most of it will go towards technology, hiring more more staff and spending on, on marketing, advertising. What What is really the the benefits to the investor? What is the ROI like? I mean, how do, I, how do you convince me to come and invest in notes? In notes. Uh, but like I said at the beginning, we offer attractive uh, interest rates, mm. which we always review from time to time. You know, we monitor what's going on in the industry, vis-a-vis -vis our own internal capabilities and whatnot. But I believe it's the, it's the sort of rates that we, that we offer that are competitive, you know, for investors. And, you know, your funds are safe to us because they are managed by the best professionals in here. You know, so um, we, we don't take on new risks. We abide by, you know, the CBN guidelines because, uh, you know, there are prescriptions, potential prescriptions by the CBN in terms of how you, um, you spend depositors' money, to what extent, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, your money is safe with us and the returns are pretty good as well. Fantastic. For the, for the lending harm, uh, there are a lot of loan sharks out there. What uh, mechanism do you deploy to retrieve um, loans? Yeah, so well, firstly, um, I would like to compare ourselves to loan sharks. If you look at the definition of a loan shark, it's somebody that operates in the dark market, unregulated, right. gives loans to vulnerable people. Yes. Um, that's not our business here. Our aim is to deliver services to the underserved, right? And how do we define the underserved? Underserved for us are people that qualify, they are within the financial, um, 
what's it called, catchment, but they just don't get enough service from banks or whatnot. So for example, a lot of people that will be giving us to are people that they have BBNs, they have financial records, they have bank accounts, but one way or the other, their banks just don't cater to them. You know, either because um, due to speed, sometimes some people might just need the money within maybe three days and stuff like that. So we're able to cater to such people. And uh, like I said, our rates are competitive. And when it comes to recovery, um, right now we use a lot of data, first and foremost. So for us, the issue of um, recovery money even starts from disbursement. So we just don't disburse to anybody. You right. know? There's a reason why we ask you to submit all the information that we ask you to submit before processing a loan. So we have to be able to assess your ability to repay that loan, first and foremost, anyway. So we look at your cash flows, we look at your history, mm -hmm. and we also look at the intended use of the business. So if you say you're a, uh, an entrepreneur, we have to assess that business that you're doing and make sure that that, that business is also viable before we even give you the loan. And then we get guarantors in some cases, we might ask for um, some sort of a collateral, depending, you know, so, but in terms of recovery, we are not, uh, we don't use these aggressive or invasive methods that people are deploying out there. Uh, you know, we believe it violates so many, so many rules. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, of course, we must ensure the safety of our capital and our investor funds. So we apply the necessary legal protocols to get our money back. For the inve investment harm, the investors' funds, do you also invest in other businesses or other things apart from just giving that as, as a, um, just lending it up? Um, we place a portion with other counterparties, so okay. they mix, but principally there are two things we use it for, yeah. for lending and placement with counterparties. Yeah.